grinding down boats via broadsides, crippling them with mass shots, or delivering the coup de grace with a stern rake are all viable methods to sink a ship in naval action. The game has a surprising amount of depth to it, and it makes the combat really compelling. While the ones I mentioned are the obvious ways to kill a ship, there is one that does not get mentioned a lot, and that is leaking. In this video, we will go over how to do leaking shots in naval action, what you need to know when doing it, and how to protect yourself from it. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer same gameplay, so if you're into that, please subscribe. The value of being able to consistently do leaking shots is that you are able to sink someone fast. It's actually so fast that it may actually be the most shot efficient way to sink someone, as most ships can sink with less than 30 shots. The key thing to understand how to do leaking is to understand how the damage model works in naval action. All ships have the following core components, the side armor, the bow, the stern, mast, which have a subcomponent like the top of the mast, and then you have the area under the waterline. For leaking, this is the area that we care about the most. If we were to take a ship out of the water, it may look like this. This different colored area is this color because of anti-fouling paint, which is a specialized coating that gets applied to slow the growth of subaquatic organisms like barnacles. Before paint, ships used to use thin layers of copper or Muntz metal. I'm not an expert in the history of the Age of Sail, so if this is paint or copper, it's not really important. The key thing here for our video game guide is that below the waterline, the hull is discolored, and this is what you want to aim for. Landing shots here will result in leaks. How many leaks is dependent on a few things. The general rule of thumb I use is that 15 to 20 leaks for rank 4 and below, while 30-ish leaks for rank 3 and above. Your mileage will vary depending on some factors like current health of the enemy ship, if they have repairs, their crew size, and their speed. The value for leaking is that with only 30 shots or so, you can effectively sink any ship in the game. This is attractive because it would take hundreds of hits on the side to have the same result. Now that we understand the value of this, we have to be able to do it reliably. As we identified earlier, we must shoot below the waterline at the discolored part of the hull. Most of the time, this part of the ship is underwater and cannot be reached reliably with cannonballs. So the key thing is to understand how this part of the ship gets exposed, i.e. when does it come out of the water. There are two things you need to understand. First is the wind. The age of sail is after all completely dependent on sails, and sails are dependent on the wind. As the wind pushes the sails, the sails push the boat, and at certain angles it will make the boat heel. Healing is when a ship leans over to one side by the excess force of the wind. This is normal, and the designs of the ship account for this. When a ship heals, it will expose the discolored part of the bottom and make the ship susceptible to leaks. Once you understand this, then the next thing is to understand how to position yourself to pounce on this opportunity. The easiest way to do this is to simply be upwind of an enemy ship. As the wind pushes them away, they will begin to lean away from you and expose their bottom. This is exacerbated if they are using their stay sails and full sails because it will make them heal even more. This is super important to know because it will be a good signal for you that you have a prime opportunity to leak. Now that we understand the theory, let's break down some examples in the wild. This first example is a great one because it really covers a lot in a short time. We start off with a friend of mine in a trink and my redoutable, and we stumble into a fight where we see a friendly Bologna who is fighting a player first rate who is in a victory. On paper, this can be a tricky fight because the win position can be so important and we're going to see why very quickly. I want to maintain the win position relative to this victory because he of course also wants to maintain the upwind position. As I get closer, he cuts me off from being able to get upwind, and I decide that I'm going to have to let him pass by while being downwind. Let's see what happens. You will see that as I realize that I'm getting crowded away from being able to stay upwind, I change my sails from full to depowering and to battle sails. What I did not do was turn my emergency crew on. Even though I'm trying to minimize healing by manipulating the sails, I am not ready to react to any leak shot. He got 19 leaks on me because he was upwind of me. Despite my sail management, he was still able to poke a lot of holes in my ship. 
I also take in more water than I had to because my emergency crew was not ready on standby. So the pumping the water out was not at full capacity as the water was flooding in. I raise my sails immediately and make my sails parallel to the wind to minimize speed as well as starting a repair to help plug holes. This leaves me as a sitting duck as the victory can now do what he wants as I have to sit there trying to reduce the water that is flooding in while bailing it out. If I did not slow my boat down like this, I would have surely sunk. The cost of this error could have been my entire ship, but I was able to save the ship at the cost of my entire stern armor and having to force a repair early in this fight. If he gets one stern rake into me, I am done for. The leaks added a lot of pressure to me and took away some options, so he has an advantage. Skipping ahead because this fight took about an hour, our band of three keep chipping away at this monster and you're going to see the power of repairs and the need to have leaks as part of your tool belt. You will see that this victory is very low on health. We used our superior maneuverability and stern raked him several times. At this point it looks like he's going to sink but he is simply going to repair and get back into the fight. In general repairs are really strong in this game, arguably too strong, and he's going to be able to get enough health back in order to get into the fight. This was demoralizing for us because two of our three ships were really low on health and seeing him repair right back really swung the favor of the fight back toward him. He will sink both of my teammates and I will be left on my own. Skipping ahead, I had decided that I have to change my strategy. I no longer feel that I will be able to reliably get stern rakes fast enough to out damage his repairs. My plan is that I will begin to grape his crew down and then I will be able to overwhelm a reduced crewed ship by leaking it. In order to get a good grape in, I will leak him to force him to slow down a bit. Unlike repairs, healing crew is on a 25 minute cooldown, so this is something that he can't magically heal himself out of immediately. I was able to get 200 of his crew on this stern rake, and now he is down to 400 crew, so this is a really great position. Skipping ahead, the victory has healed his crew via rum, and now I plan to repeat the same move. One last grape should knock his crew out for good. On this rake, I was able to get 241 crew, and this is after he has used his rum. He is now going to be stuck like this for 20 minutes or so. Now he is prepped to be leaked and to be overwhelmed by flooding. He simply will not have the crew to man all the parts of his ship and bail the water out. Skipping ahead for the last time, I was thinking about potentially boarding him, but then I see an opportunity arise. I'm going to be able to get upwind from him and I will be able to get some leaks. So the last part of my plan is starting to really come together. I use spacebar to single tap to make sure that I can find the right elevation to shoot at to get my broadside. You will see that this volley was not particularly good because my position relative to the wind was not great. I maneuver to make sure my next volley will be from a good firing position, basically me being totally upwind from him. This was a good one. With 22 leaks and him only having 400 crew, he's in a really tough spot. He's either going to have to stop everything and bail the water out, which will let me get behind him and stern rake him, or he's just going to sink. He starts to go under really quickly. The key thing to watch for is the water level relative to his gun decks, and that's how you can tell if he's actually going under or not. It takes knowledge, patience, and practice to be able to reproduce reliable results, but once you get this down, it is a nice tool for your tool belt because in terms of quantity of shots, this is the most efficient way to kill someone as you can theoretically kill any ship with 30 or so shots if they all leak. I hope that people have found this video interesting. While I only have about 250 hours in this game, I'm still learning, but I did notice a drought of guides online and I made sure to source information from some of the more veteran players. So I hope this video helps to spur interest in the game and to help brand new players who are still learning the mechanics. 
at the end of the day, the most important thing is to know how to learn because if you know how to get the right information and know how to practice with the right information, you will get better over time. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thank you.